We are live. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Undefined. I'm Christian Mokin. I'm here with my brother, Patrick. Um, we are on our, what, fifth episode? Fifth or fourth? I have no idea. I think the fifth. <laughs> One of those two. Um, we are on that episode of Undefined, and we are here to talk about our engineering journey and anything else that kind of pops up in our lives, and we're going to relay it back to you guys, so here we go. Uh, our main topic for this podcast, we are going to be talking about the best skills and um, activities that we've learned throughout our engineering undergrad career that have helped us get to where we are today. So, um, Patrick, do you want to go ahead and get started with some of the skills that you may have learned in some classes that you've uh, gone in that I you've the, applied to your roles? The biggest skill I learned in classes that kind of like directly applied to like every internship I've done is like 3D modeling, like SolidWorks, AutoCAD, Inventor. Because like even if you're not like directly like designing something, you have to use it to look at drawings and understand how to use it to, to look at different things. So like, for example, like my internship I'm doing now, I'm not doing any like designing, with, which was what normally people re uh, relate to like SolidWorks and stuff like that. They think you're going to be designing something, mm -hmm. but I'm not even using it for that. I'm using it because the, the plant drawings are drawn out in AutoCAD and I had to know how to use it to be able to even look and navigate the drawings. So I and think that's probably one of the most oh, you important said AutoCAD? things. Yeah, we use AutoCAD, which I I hate AutoCAD. I like Inventor and SolidWorks so much more. Yeah, well, AutoCAD uh, isn't that made by Autodesk? Inventor is made by Autodesk too. Yeah, but they use like I don't even know. Like some of them, there's some design engineers that use AutoCAD to make their 3D models. I guess I don't I don't know what the difference is exactly. I just don't like AutoCAD because there's so many different settings. It's a lot more in depth i feel like it's oh, not yeah. as intuitive especially as like 2d for 2d drawings it sucks yeah i mean it's it's good it's a lot it's like industry standard for a lot of companies but um did you know you can take drawings in autocad i mean if they're set up to be like a like a top view front view side view you can take a drawing from autocad and import it into inventor and then make a 3d model from those three drawings those three Let's views see. see i had one assignment when i had to make like little like simple shims and they told me use autocad and i didn't know how to use it and i was like oh i know how to use solidworks inventor i can use autocad it took me so long to learn how to use it and then i drew it out like in 2d model and then i extruded it to a 3d model and then i was like okay i can just do like what you do in inventor and solidworks you just go to a page and put put on a drawing but you click a button and it makes a drawing for you basically but autocad was so much more complicated than that and i hated it hmm that blows um, what part were you making? It was like a shim, like to like one of the like machines they get. It's like a, a bolt in there that they need a specially designed like tool to get in there to turn it. So it was and, like a jig. Yeah. So like they made a bunch of them when they gave them the that like machine, but as soon as they like something's wrong with it, they just throw them all away and they realized, oh crap, we don't have any more and we don't have drawings for them. So I just made the drawings oh, real quick for man. them so they can order more. But so it's super why simple. You use Inventor. I mean, I'm assuming like tools, tooling. Um, a lot of times, like shims and stuff like that, they don't need a a really professional drawing. They just need like a drawing yeah. that gets signed off on by your manager. It was super base. I was ashamed of it when I turned it in. <laughs> <laughs> There's like no but, labeling or anything. It's just like no. units are millimeters, like, units are inches. <laughs> yeah, I was like, should I tolerance it? How should I? Should I do? I have to write like all this stuff? And they're like, nope. Mm -hmm. You're good. That's not that important. Just turn it they're, in. They're like, all right, uh, we're going to go machine it really quickly. If it doesn't fit, reduce it by like two millimeters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's basically how it goes, at least for like assembly maintenance and um, assembly equipment engineering. One of my co-ops was in assembly uh, production, and I had to do a lot of drawings that were kind of like that continuous improvement stuff for tooling on the line. It blows because there's so many projects you have to do, and uh, yeah. I'm sure you're just kind of like getting into it. But you're pro it yeah. sounds like you're kind of like working with assembly maintenance conveyance type stuff. Yeah, because I, I work can with like the conveyor team, so it's all just like making sure the equipment operates and the belts keep working to transport the cars and all that stuff. So they're kind of like I don't know if it's bad to say, but they're like glorified maintenance, I'm like. Just a higher up maintenance team, basically. Yeah, I mean, just make sure uh, that makes sense because like it's just a it's just another support team. 
Yeah. Because you have but, like um, a, an assembly engineering team that works on the uh, PLCs that actually does the logic behind the conveyance. Yeah. And then you have the people who actually work on the conveyance. But it's they're all engineering, just the same. Yeah. What I liked, I liked because last summer I was with like a smaller engineering firm. Like, not firm, just company. But like when I had a design thing for them, like the engineers there made all the drawings. They kind of like would learn how to do it for a project and then not do it for a few years, forget it, how to do it. And then they'd have to relearn it to do everything. But like where I am now at GM, they like subcontract everything. So like they don't, they don't draw anything. They get different companies to draw everything for them, which I, I prefer that because like, I don't like, I personally well, for, don't like, really tooling, like for tooling. Yeah. Like I don't like yeah. drawing and stuff like that, that much. It doesn't intrigue me that much. No, honestly, it's the same thing with Toyota too. Like all the tooling is a uh, subcontracted. And um, yeah. vendors vendors provide third-party drawings. Sometimes the tools don't even have 3D models. It's just 2D drawings. And yeah. sometimes you'll have to, like, make a 3D model to see if a tool fit with, like, say say a tool is integrating with your frame. You want to make sure it doesn't bump into, like, your stabilizing bar if it's getting moved over the rear axle or something like that. And you can't even use, yeah. like, a 3D model for the tool. You just have 2D uh, drawings, and it just becomes a pain in the butt so yeah it, like uh, a, a lot of what my managers do is like they look at something and they're like oh we need this new thing to help this machine do something and they kind of make general parameters of what it needs and they send it to a company and they draw it out and they basically approve it and stuff yeah, they like get, we just like, had a quotes. meeting today over some like new assembly that they're drawing out and they kind of like show the engineers that are working with me that i work under Kind of, we did this. This is why we designed it this way, and then the engineers just either approve it or tell them to change it or not. Which is pretty cool. Don't have to deal with any of that design stuff because I was looking at the stuff. I was like, "How do you do this?" And so I don't know how to do that complicated of stuff in, in SolidWorks and stuff. Yeah, it gets it gets crazy, but they usually have big teams working together on that. Like, um, I, I know uh, a lot of people kind of have a misconception of mechanical engineering. Like say they go into a, a production plant like we work in and they think you can get hired on as like an, a mechanical engineer in a production plant, um, which you can, but generally you there won't be like mechanical engineering specific positions in a produ production plant. It'll be like quality engineering or reliability or assembly engineering or yeah, what else is there? I can't even Conveyor think. Conveyor engineering. Conveyor <laughs> industrial. Um, all of which can be done by a mechanical engineer. Yeah. So, like, yeah. I don't know. You can't really narrow down your options thinking you're just going to go into mechanical engineering. Unless you're really looking for a a, a position in design, you're probably not going to find much design in, in a, a mass manufacturing unless you go to, like, headquarters and actually start making the design for the vehicle itself because none of that is done in plant. Yeah. But, um, and like, uh, another good thing to learn is like coding and stuff. Cause just from being, being at GM for a few weeks, they're, they're desperate need for like control engineers. And for that, you know, it's for like, for example, like a robotic arm that moves a car or something. Control engineer mm -hmm. is the one that like knows how to code it, tell it what to do and stuff. So if you know how to code, that's a huge benefit. I don't know how to code at all. I suck at coding. I hated coding all through high school. That's true. But like coding is a superpower. <laughs> yeah, coding is definitely a superpower. And I would definitely like recommend getting into industrial type coding because uh, I know a lot of uh, coding programs in school teach you like C++ and Java and stuff like that, web-based coding. But it's different when you get to uh, a set or industrial engineering applications. Are you, are you still there? It said you were. It said you were calling me on Discord. What? So my phone. My phone was buzzing really loud, and it says you're getting a call from you on Discord. Dude, my hands were right. My hands have not <laughs> moved. I've been. I've had them crossed. <laughs> but uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, coding for industrial engineering. Yeah, it's a lot simpler, but still, it's all logic based, pretty much. Like ladder logic. Um, a lot of it's based around that. I don't know if you've ever experienced any of that, Patrick. Have you? Nope. Yeah, it's like basically dragging function blocks in 
these uh, companies that provide automated systems already have it like pre-programmed the controllers, so you can basically drag like different types of commands and stuff to it. You still have to like code it a little bit, but it's not yeah. it's not terrible. Once you learn it, it gets pretty simple. Um, I'm no expert in it though. I'm not, I'm not trying to say that I freaking know a lot about it. I just I've seen it. So um, yeah. yeah. And then industrial engineer. There's a lot of industrial like majors where I am. Like a lot of people are doing industrial engineering. So I was I've because at UT is uh, where we go to school we don't have industrial engineering I don't think so right yeah no we just have a manufacturing certificate and a lot of them were like oh I was gonna go into business but industrial engineering is basically a glorified business degree hmm. I mean right? yeah it's like, I I mean it's you like get into I, like the business side when you do an industrial engineering but like yeah you do touch into the business side I'd say you touch more into the process side of how like everything runs yeah because like one of the girls projects at where i am is like timing the how long each station takes in the plant to do process improvement and it's really funny oh, yeah, she's, everyone... getting, she's getting like cycle times and yeah so she's trying like to like a value stream map. yeah so like but everyone, everyone on the floor is so mad because they don't like them doing that kind of stuff because they're like through process improvement you eliminate jobs no, oh, yeah. A lot well, of the time. So. I mean, they shouldn't worry about that at GM. Y'all are unionized, and they're going to have to yeah. fight tooth and nail to do anything to y'all's lines. crazy. Dude, does it, doesn't it suck? Yeah, like, I get... Uh, it's It makes it a lot... Like, I get the workers good for the workers, but, it, yeah, for, like, engineers... I don't even think it's good for the workers, but let's not even dive into that topic. Yeah, <laughs> but it makes it a, super hard to get things done. Like, uh... Like how my my team is like kind of like maintenance, high up maintenance basically support. Mm -hmm. And then um, like the maintenance team is union, like on the floor is unionized. So like if we, if our, my bot or my manager tells them like, get this done at this time, our maintenance is awful and they rarely do things. And my managers can't just go down there, get mad at them and tell them to do it or do it themselves. They like go through this whole process and it takes so long. I was like, why can't you just go down there and yell at them for not doing their job? Yeah, I know, dude. The biggest thing I think I don't like about it is, like, there's no real hard, like, hard work is not rewarded in a union environment. Um, if there's a, if there's an opening for a job, like, all the people who have been there Seniority. the longest, even if, yeah, even if they're trash workers, they have a guaranteed job, they don't want to work hard. The job gets offered to all those guys before someone who's actually working their tails off trying to get up. So I don't think it, I don't think it's a very healthy environment to yeah. and breed. We had an incident where one Good. of the interns kind of yeah. got like in trouble because they were going to help. They were trying to do a project where they needed to talk to team leads in the line, and they like touched something. They, <laughs> they they moved the toolbox from the yeah. team leads desk to the like other side of the aisle. And they got in huge trouble. I'm like, are you kidding? You can see it right there. It's like two feet in front of you. You can just ask someone. It's right there. Dude, it's it's crazy. It's like, I don't know. It's counterintuitive. Yeah. You want to do process improvement, remove the union. <laughs> <laughs> then you can do some process improvement. Some people will get so mad. I know, dude. That would, that's such a terrible thing to say. If for for but, um, Yeah, I don't. Mm, I don't know. It just seems know. Toyota's, so. It's Toyota's just, not unionized, and everybody. Yeah. Is, if your company is like based around respect for people, which Toyota, that's one of Toyota's two foundational pillars: respect for people and continuous improvement. It's it works out better for everybody. You know, Toyota's the only company that didn't lay off any workers during the pandemic. Automobile. See, Anytime someone brings up the union at work, I tell them how Toyota's not unionized. And I was like, it seems pretty good there. My brother tells me just good things about it. And I don't know. Every, like, every meeting I sit in on that, it's just the, like, it seems really Arguing. frustrating working as an engineer in there because you can't do exactly what you feel like you need to do. So, like, anytime they brought something up, the union worker was like, well, I need to get that approved. Man, well, run that by me. I need to make sure that's okay. I need to make sure someone... That person can't do it because he's blah, blah, blah. Dude. Yeah. It's ridiculous. God, that's, that's 
awful. Yeah, no, just treat your employees right, and then nothing will be a problem. Right? But, you know, you can see why. They, I can see why they're there, because companies will take advantage of their employees. But, yeah, luckily Toyota's not one of those companies. So I don't know if GM is or not. <laughs> I mean, GM. I think GM's a good company. Now. I feel like at some point though, a company's so, so big, and, like social media is such a big thing. Like, how far can you get exploiting your employees in today's yeah. like, world? Definitely now. not. Everything's out there. I mean, even though I assume like y'all have to have like camera passes on your phone when you're inside the production plant. Yeah, you can't have like any electronic device out unless it's approved. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the same thing. I feel like a production plant is a production plant. Wait, all wait, can the, the workers rules. at Toyota, like the the assembly line workers, have their phones? Out with um, them, their personal phones. Yeah, on the line or in on a break line, area. Yeah. Oh no! When they're working. No. See, I think I'm pretty sure I heard that GM they they let them have their phones out and they listen to music. They can do. I think that's because the union. Oh wow! Like, you can't keep their phones out. They something. can listen to music on the line, even with like. Do you all have like high? Um, I mean, I'm really loud, like torque wrenches and drills and stuff like that. Not loud, no. Oh, it's not really loud really, on the line. It, it's really loud on our line. Oh, because ours is like uh, the only thing that. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be my dreams forever. Is like when someone needs help on like a certain line, like like a music comes on and stuff to say that they need help. That music is playing all the time. Oh, dude, it's the same thing at Toyota. Let me see if I can. It's some stupid like child theme that plays. Yeah, ours is like weird circus type music. Yeah, it's like circus music. Yeah, I can't. I can't even. It's uh, yeah, it's playing constantly too. And if you have AGVs, if the AGVs are like driving on a walkway, they're freaking playing that. I don't know. We have a lot of AGVs, so they're always playing. What are AGVs? Uh, what is it? Automatic guided. Auto, auto guided vehicles or something like that. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, we have those. Yeah. I just want to like take one day just take autonomous a video of everything. video <laughs> vehicles, huh? Yeah, those are crazy. Uh, dude, you, you'll get in trouble if you do that. I know. <laughs> I would never do that, but yeah, no. I just want to. It's Here, so cool. Like I want people to here's see an it. You can't see it. Camera pass. See, oh my gosh, there was it's my a work phone. <laughs> I was on the line. Just walking around, just like I didn't have anything to do, so I was just walking on the floor, and I was with another intern, and we were watching like the, just like the, the final stages of the car being built. Mm-hmm. Some parts where I feel like they would not want that, how exactly how they do it on the internet. But he like brought out his phone and was like videoing, <laughs> and like put it on his Snapchat story, and I was like, "Can you delete that right now? You're an idiot!" <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, he could get fired for that. Yeah, it's bad. I don't know. At Toyota, they're pretty nice, though. I feel like you have to do quite a bit to get fired there. Yeah, and I asked, um, I asked one of my uh, bosses one time, and I was like, like, can I walk, can I go to a different, like, Toyota's plant, and it be, like, similar but totally different? Like, do you guys coordinate how you guys do things, how, like, what systems you guys buy? And he was like, not really. Like, they said they used to, but then they used to have, like, GM employees go to Toyota's factory. Toyota's, Toyota's employees go to GM's factory. Well, Toyota and GM have a partnership. I think it's, like, called Numi or something like that in California. Oh, They're really? together, yeah. Like, some special projects. But, I don't know. I'm surprised. I don't know. I feel like Toyota trying, trying to, to be more... I went, they're not trying to go fully EV like GM's doing, which okay. I think is a very bold and confident claim. I don't know. Just talking with some of the engineers around our plant, I mean, I can't even imagine if Toyota tried to go EV right now. Yeah. That'd, they're, be, a, they're, that'd be a hard they're, transition. They're doing a lot <laughs> yeah. to get ready for that. I mean, we just we're doing hybrid Tundras right now, and... Nuh-uh. That's a whole beast in itself. Yeah. What I mean, the heck? Are those you know, the new t- Yeah, the new Tundras have hybrid engines. 
I'm like so scared to say stuff because I don't know if it's like released or not yet. Because I get like yeah. emails like announcing stuff that like before they're announced. I'm like, I want to say it, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Now, I can't say anything about the new model, like the 2023 Tundra, but the 2022 Tundra. Yeah, they they have hybrid engines. Not all of them. Some models. Some I wish I worked at the cool factory. Dude, our factory's pretty cool. <laughs> How big is it? Pr- I'll look that up right now. How, look I'm up looking. yours. Let's see. I am going to look it up. Take a guess. Take a guess how big yours is, square footage-wise. Wait, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at mine first so I can get it, because I might say, like, something like that. Yeah, no, we're going to end up looking real dumb. I heard 8, it. 8,000 square feet. Okay, I have mine. Let's see what yours is. Okay. I'm going to guess 4 million square feet. For mine? Yeah. 4.2 million square feet, yeah. Whoo, that's close. What about yours? Mine is 3.4 million. 3.4? Yeah. Look. Ow. Dang it. I feel like I have arthritis. I think, oh, I yeah. think they're pretty similar. Yeah. Like how many... Wait, can you say that? Okay, I don't know. But LDT, the plant I'm at is like GM's highest producing plant. Oh, are you? Were you going to ask how many vehicles we produce per shift? Like yeah, per day and stuff. Can you? I don't know oh, if that's clock. No, we like, can't. You can't say that. Okay. Yeah. I can't say. Wait. I can say what highest. Pro- I'm pretty sure that's known. Like they don't care about. Oh no, that. you can say if you're highest production. Oh yeah. But, I mean, but well, because like all the other factor, all the other factories make like, like Arlington makes like the Escalade and stuff like that, and the, like Suburbans. And then, like, the other factory here makes, like, the Cadillacs and stuff. So they're super high-end Dude, cars that Arlington. obviously don't sell as well as, like, SUVs. Dude, um, we're about to... Uh... You, you've seen the new Sequoia, right? Yes, it looks, like the tun- it looks like the new Tundra. It's freaking sick. Are those made there? They're not made there. Yeah, we make the Tundra and the Sequoia. You literally have the coolest factory. <laughs> Dude, I know. Uh, the only thing that would be cool, cooler, I feel like, is if we made, like, the Supra or something here. Oh, yeah. Do you know what that's made? No, I don't know. I wouldn't... I was looking at... I was just, like, Probably randomly Indiana. looking at jobs for, like, Subaru and stuff. <laughs> Dude, they don't there's post only, anything, bro. There's only one factory in the U.S. Everything else yeah. is Japan. So they yeah. ship our cars over here? That's crazy. Oh, yeah. I feel like Subaru is a big enough brand to have, like, a bunch of factories here in the U.S. I really like Subaru. They, yeah, they pay to ship all those cars here. It's crazy. I want to work I want to work on their freaking um, rally car racing team. That looks fun. Yeah. I like, the, I like the new WRX. Do you not like it? I like it. I would I buy that car. I hate it. I, I would hate buy it. it. I like it. I hate it. it. Why? Why do you like it? I think it looks dope. I think it looks like a rally car. What about car. it looks dope? I think it looks like I can, I can race. I can fly that thing. It looks like it's. It looks like the bottom one fourth of it is made of complete plastic. All around the car. I like it. It looks like they put a prototype placeholder bumper on the back. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. Sure. Go ahead and get it. <laughs> <laughs> How are you going to get it? With what money? With that GM co-op money? <laughs> <sighs> oh, man. No, dude. I want to get one of these Tundras. They are... So- okay. I'll, I'll be the first to say it. The base model Tundra, I don't think, looks very good. I, I think it looks model? like a... The base model Tundra, I think, I think it looks like a GMC. I think it looks like a cross between like a GMC... And a uh, like a, an iPhone 50 or something like that, especially from think, the side. Looking I at think it from GMCs the side, are better than Tundras. I think the base model GMCs <laughs> are better than the base model Tundras. I don't think they're made better, but I don't think I've ever seen a base model Tundra. I've only seen photos of like super spec'd out Tundras. Dude, the TRD Pro, so nice. They're so expensive though, aren't they? Like eighty thousand. Pretty much, yeah. That's they, uh, insane. I'd rather get a Rivian truck. They they got them priced to to make back that uh, a Rivian truck. Oh, dude. did you see the photo? I saw one. I saw one in Detroit. Do you see it? That thing is sick. 
Yeah, that thing's the size of my freaking Impreza. It's not. It's huge. No, it's kind of. It's not. It's a com. It's like Tacoma size. Like a compact truck, yeah. But it's sick. I'd rather just get an F one fifty Lightning if we we're gonna do that. Yeah, it's expensive. It's like seventy five thousand. Yeah, like starting. And, uh, yeah, I know. I I just don't think it looks cool enough. I mean, that instant torque would be nice, but that looks sick. I'm gonna buy that too. I'm gonna buy a WRX and a Rivian truck when I win the lottery. That's what I would do. I can't believe you don't like the WRX. I love the WRX, the new Dude, one. The new WRX looks like trash. Every time I watch a YouTube video on it, I'm in there in the comments like one v a hundred, defending the WRX. <laughs> one v a hundred. You going in? Sending sending hooks in? <laughs> no, I like the uh, I like the new BRZ though. And I like the new uh, Nissan Z, too. Oh, the if Nissan Z is nice. If I could get a nice. sports car right now, it would probably be the Nissan Z. Nissan Z is nice. But that's ex- that's like 40000 isn't it? That's expensive. For a coupe? I don't think I'd yeah. pay that for a coupe. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty expensive. <laughs> I like how off topic we got. <laughs> we can't even say this is a skills episode because we just started talking about... I know, dude. I mean, we talked about manufacturing. We kind of gave some insight into manufacturing. I'm sure a lot of people don't really know exactly what it is. They probably just think a frame goes along a line. People kind of just stick parts on perfectly. Yeah, I know. It's so There's much. so many problems in manufacturing. I feel like GM's trying to be more automated Automated with it. It's yeah, a lot of like, automated stuff. It's a lot of it's automated. The only part that's... Actually, I don't know if I can say that. But, uh, yeah, a lot of it's automated. It's pretty cool to see, though, the parts that are automated. Those robot arms going to work. Yeah. I know a lot of weld processes are automated everywhere, but a lot of the um, actual assembly processes for the truck are yeah. pretty pretty humanized at Toyota. Yeah. I'm pretty sure everything is, like, all human. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's how it is. Um, yeah. Standardized I'm sure GM work has a little boy. better processes than Toyota, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm sure... Dude, we're, we're, Toyota's where everybody learned it from, man. That just-in-time, lean manufacturing process. It's going to get boring if we talk about that. Oh, yeah. we're actually coming up on time. You just want to call it? 27 minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Talked about utter nonsense, but it was fun. Sweet. We're, uh, you know, I'm going to try and get a guest on next week. Who? Maybe we can get Trent. See, uh, get get a civil engineer on our podcast. He just took the professional engineering exam too, so we oh, can get some did? information on that. Yeah, he P? passed it. Yeah, he took the he F-E? passed it. Yeah. Oh, I forgot he's been graduated for a while. Yeah. Does he still live in? Does he, wait. <laughs> he lives in College um, Station now. Oh really? Um, yeah. That's cool. We can make fun of him because civil engineers suck. It's kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. Well, how, I bet you he studied on a napkin for that test. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, the P, the PE the PE is freaking hard for anybody. But um, all right. Ah, uh, yeah. What's up? Well, uh, we'll go ahead and call it there. Yeah. Thanks again for watching. This has been Undefined with Christian and Patrick. We'll catch you next time. Peace. <laughs>